Deep in the dramatic marine battlefield of World War II's Pacific Theater, the American submarine USS Batfish embarked on her sixth patrol, poised for yet another confrontation with her Japanese counterparts roaming beneath the waves of the South China Sea. With tension building as the days unfolded, the intrepid Batfish silently prowled further and further into hostile waters, her crew remaining vigilant and ready for battle at any moment. Steel nerve sailors sprang into action as the submarine's radar began blipping with ominous signals. It was the moment they'd been waiting for. Spotting a Japanese submarine ahead, courageous Captain Jake Fife, alone on the bridge, deftly guided Batfish towards her prey. With the enemy in his sights, he strategically maneuvered his ship into the perfect position. As soon as he gave the order to fire, the crew unleashed four Mark 18 torpedoes on their unsuspecting victim. Seconds later, a fiery red explosion and the unmistakable sound of a submarine breaking into pieces as it succumbed to the depths let them know they'd hit their target. Without a moment's pause, the sleek predator continued her hunt. There were more enemy submarines in the area, and she was not about to let them go. As war raged across the Pacific, the role of submarines underwent a profound transformation. Initially relegated to reconnaissance and interdiction missions, submarines soon started being used in a more aggressive fashion. With Japan dominating the seas in the early years of the war, the need for a powerful underwater presence became increasingly apparent to the U.S. Navy, who ramped up production to meet demand. Among the new submarines planned for 1942 was a Balao-class ship tentatively called USS Akupa in reference to a small fish commonly known as a gray snapper. However, on September 24th of that year, it was rechristened USS Batfish after a wily deep-sea predator that uses stealth and cunning to lure and catch its prey. It would soon become clear just how appropriate the new name would be. As construction began on December 27th, 1942, at the Portsmouth Navy Yard in Kittery, Maine, it was clear that Batfish was designed to embody the cutting edge of submarine technology. The 311-foot-long Balao boasted an advanced JT sonar system, a passive listening device that used underwater microphones called hydrophones mounted on the hull of the submarine to locate enemy vessels using sound waves. With her streamlined hull and hydrodynamic design, Batfish could dive to depths of up to 400 feet, around 100 feet deeper than her Gato-class predecessors, enabling her to avoid discovery by the enemy while conducting covert operations. Her potent arsenal included 10 21-inch torpedo tubes, with six in the bow and four in the stern, and her Mark 14 torpedoes each had a 643-pound torpex warhead and was capable of a range of approximately 4,500 yards at a speed of 46 knots. In addition, Batfish possessed a powerful 5-inch 25-caliber deck gun, which could deliver a punishing blow to any surface target foolish enough to come within range. This allowed her to participate in shore bombardments during special operations missions. If that weren't enough, she also came with 40mm Beaufort and 20mm Ehrlichan anti-aircraft cannons to fend off the aerial onslaught of enemy bombers. Once construction was completed, USS Batfish was launched on May 5, 1943, and commissioned on August 21st under Lieutenant Commander Wayne R. Merrill. After an extensive shakedown period, her crew received essential training in diving, attacking, evading, and damage control. After a brief stop to witness the power of their Mark 14s firsthand on the torpedo range in Newport, Rhode Island, they continued on to New London, Connecticut to make voyage repairs and receive additional training in submarine combat routine. Satisfied that his men were ready to take on the fearsome Japanese Imperial War Machine, Lieutenant Commander Merrill sailed Batfish out of New London on October 15th, bound for the tumultuous war zone engulfing the Pacific. Out of the blue, as Batfish steadily neared the Panama Canal, her eager crew caught sight of another submarine patrolling the dark Atlantic waters. Believing it to be a German U-boat, they frantically fired off a torpedo. Narrowly evading the hit, the enigmatic submarine disappeared without a trace, her identity remaining a mystery to this day. It would be Batfish's first brush with danger, but certainly not her last. Just days later, with the canal now in sight, the crew was given another reminder of the perils of war this time from an unexpected source. Mistaking Batfish for an enemy submarine, a U.S. Navy bomber rapidly approached before dropping its payload. By a stroke of luck, the bomber failed to make a direct hit, and damage from the friendly fire was minimal. After minor repairs, Batfish pushed on to Pearl Harbor, 
and from there to her first war patrol in an open sea zone south of Honshu, Japan. While her first attempts at attack were prevented by typhoons, and a sighting of the Yamato, one of the two largest warships in the world, ended with Batfish being unable to keep up, it wouldn't be long before she had her chance to prove her worth as an underwater assassin. Just before midday on January 19th, 1943, she came across an unwitting convoy of four Japanese ships on the horizon. It was an opportunity she couldn't pass up. With the cloak of night descending, Batfish unleashed a barrage of torpedoes, the thunderous roar echoing through the darkness as they found no targets, sending one vessel plunging into the depths, while leaving another in critical condition before finishing it off the next morning. With Lieutenant Commander John K. Fife, nicknamed Jake, taking over command from Merrill in May, Batfish would continue adding to her tally, dodging vicious depth charge attacks from Japanese planes and patrol boats to take out one enemy vessel after another. On June 22, 1944, Batfish successfully sank a large cargo ship called Nagaragawa Maru, provoking a nearby Japanese patrol boat to come seeking revenge. Forced to dive to avoid depth charges, Batfish would soon learn the hard way that her nautical charts were inaccurate. While the chart showed depths of 400 feet in the area, she came in for a nasty surprise when she found herself grounded on an underwater volcanic peak at just over 240 feet, as more than 50 depth charges rained down around her in a tense eight-hour ordeal before she was able to surface and assess her damage. When she finally made it back to the safety of Midway Atoll for repairs, she was equipped with brand new Mark 18 electric torpedoes, which, unlike the Mark 14, didn't produce a wake of bubbles or turbine exhaust trailing back to the submarine that fired it, giving it less chance of being detected by the enemy. By August, she was back out on patrol, this time near the Palau Islands, looking for a chance to test out her new arsenal. So when intelligence came through of a Japanese destroyer run aground at nearby Velasco Reef, Batfish didn't hesitate in going to investigate. Arriving on the scene, she encountered two Japanese vessels, a mine layer and a transport stranded on the reef, with the ill-fated destroyer Semidare beached across the atoll. Meanwhile, a Japanese float plane, two tugs, two patrol boats, and a minesweeper that Batfish believed to be a second destroyer were also roaming the area. Struggling to locate the transport through heavy rain and rough seas, Batfish unexpectedly found the minesweeper in her path, launching a devastating barrage of torpedoes and obliterating the warship in a deafening explosion. She then turned her sights on Samidare, leaving it damaged beyond repair with two successful torpedo strikes before later watching the Japanese put the destroyer out of her misery with demolition charges. In her first year of service, USS Batfish had already seen plenty of action, but her most dramatic confrontation was yet to come. On her sixth patrol, she was sent to Luzon, the largest island of the Philippines, which the Allies were in the process of liberating. With the Japanese unable to defend the island, Vice Admiral Shigeyoshi Miwa, commander of the Sixth Fleet, directed submarines RO-46, RO-112, RO-113, and RO-115 to halt their patrols and instead head to Takao on Formosa to unload torpedoes and ammunition before proceeding to the Apari area of northern Luzon to embark evacuees. Having already been warned of the Japanese evacuation plans, Batfish was on the lookout. At 10.50 p.m. on February 9th, with the sea plunging into darkness, her SJ radar sprang to life, detecting a blip cutting through the ocean at a steady 12 knots, its course set at 310 degrees, steering away from Apari and toward Formosa. Suspicion arose. Could it be a Japanese submarine lurking beneath the waves? Captain Fife frantically radioed through to friendly ships in the area to ask for their positions. After crossing them off his list one by one, it seemed only one possibility remained. Analyzing the target's course and speed with radar and sonar technology, she got closer and closer. At 10.31 p.m., she shot four Mark 18s from her bow tubes, poised to strike their elusive prey. Yet fate intervened as all four torpedoes veered off course, detonating harmlessly at the end of their paths. Undeterred, Batfish readied itself for a second assault. By the stroke of midnight on February 10th, her crew realized they had a Japanese submarine at a mere 1,020 yards. Once more, they unleashed four torpedoes. The first malfunctioned, running hot in the tube, but the second struck true, engulfing the enemy submarine in a blaze. A tense moment followed as the third torpedo traversed the aftermath of the explosion, 
while the fourth missed its mark and exploded at the end of its run. However, the breaking up noises heard by Batfish's crew let them know that one torpedo had been enough to seal their opponent's fate. It is still not clear exactly which submarine Batfish sank that day, though some suggest that it may have been RO-115. At 7.51 p.m. on February 11th, the radar on board Batfish once again indicated the presence of an enemy nearby. Drawing closer, the silhouette materialized into the form of another Japanese submarine. Batfish was preparing to strike when all of a sudden her target dived, disappearing from view. Yet Batfish was determined not to let her victim escape. At 9.05 p.m., the passive sonar picked up the subtle sound of the Japanese submarine adjusting her ballast tanks, a telltale sign of her presence. Swiftly, the vessel resurfaced, resuming her course, oblivious to the imminent threat lurking beneath the waves. By 10.05 p.m., Batfish was in position and let rip a ferocious flurry of Mark 18s. The first torpedo struck home, tearing through submarine number two with devastating force and sinking her almost immediately. The identity of the victim would later be revealed as RO-112. The relentless Batfish remained on the prowl, and around 2.15 a.m. on February 13th, she gained radar contact on a target at 10,700 yards. In hot pursuit of her prey, she got to a range of 7,150 yards before the contact disappeared from radar. Just as before, the submarine had dived, eluding Batfish, for now. Half an hour later, at 3.10 a.m., the submarine resurfaced, and Batfish was able to regain radar contact at a range of 9,800 yards. Submerging to radar depth, she closed in on submarine number three until she got to a distance of 1,500 yards, this time attacking with just three torpedoes. In a burst of searing light, the Mark 18 blew the Japanese submarine apart, sending her to the depth so fast that the other two torpedoes didn't even have time to reach their mark. This third submarine was later identified as RO-113. There were no survivors from any of the three. By taking out three Japanese submarines in just 76 hours, USS Batfish became, along with the British HMS Upholder, one of only two Allied submarines to earn the distinction of sinking three Axis counterparts, and the only one to do so in such a short span of time. As she sailed towards Guam, accompanied by the valiant Blackfish, whispers of her legendary exploits spread like wildfire across the waves. Pulling into Opera Harbor on February 21, 1945, Batfish was greeted with cheers and accolades from U.S. Navy photographers, hailed as the triumphant sub-killer. On March 3, 1945, she made her triumphant return to Pearl Harbor, her heroic deeds earning her the prestigious Presidential Unit Citation, a testament to her remarkable achievement. Yet, instead of resting on her laurels, Batfish would soon be back out on her next mission. Her 7th patrol saw her bombarding the village of Nagata from the ocean surface, and then conducting a daring rescue of three survivors from a ditched American B-25 Mitchell bomber, and taking them to safety in Iwo Jima, just days before the Japanese surrender would end her wartime activities. After spending the rest of her career in training operations in the Atlantic and Caribbean, since 1973, she's had a permanent home at the Muskogee War Memorial Park in Oklahoma.